If you want some visibility into TCP and IP, you can install a program like Wireshark. This is a free program for OS X and Windows. In the last module, we used Fiddler to examine HTTP messages that were being exchanged between the client and the server. But Wireshark goes much deeper than this. You can examine every bit of information that's flowing through your network interfaces. Using Wireshark, we're going to be able to see the TCP handshake. These are the TCP messages that are required to establish a connection between the client and the server, and that happens before the actual HTTP messages can start to flow. You can also observe TCP and IP headers. They add 20 bytes each on top of every message. And what I'd like to do is take a look at the program that we just wrote while Wireshark is running to see what gets exchanged. I've configured the application to run in the debugger now. The command line argument is going to specify a URL that says, just get the root resource for www.odecode.com. Now, if you remember from module two, everything on odecode.com makes sure that it gets and redirects resources to make sure they come from odecode.com and not www.odecode.com. So this request should generate a simple permanent redirect response from the server. So let's get started with Wireshark. The first thing I'm going to do is specify some capture options. And the capture options, I'm going to use a filter here to say, only capture stuff between this computer and the host odecode.com. And it's going to be able to figure out what the IP address is for that host and capture all the traffic. I don't want to capture everything because when you run Wireshark without any filter, you'll find out that your network card is probably busier than you thought it was with all the little services and synchronization and chat windows. They're all connecting to something. So let's start Wireshark. And let me come into Visual Studio and start our program with the debugger. So we're at the point where we are about to connect with a socket. Let me just step over that line of code. And we see that there are three new entries behind us here in Wireshark. We'll come back and look at them later. Now let me advance to the point where we actually send off the GET request. This is the HTTP request message. I will step over that. We have a, three new entries that popped up here in Wireshark. And let's just run to completion where we read the results and finally just exit the application. And let me stop the capture just so we don't get any more messages that are captured. All right, let's drill into what we have. The first message here is a message that was sent from 192.168.1.134, which is the private IP address of my computer here in the local area network at the Allen Estate in Western Maryland. That message was sent from me to 96.31.33.25, which I'm going to assume is the IP address of the server hosting odecode.com, and it was sent using the TCP protocol. There's no HTTP involved yet. Here in the bottom of the window, you can see the nitty gritty details of what was sent using the transmission control protocol. And also what TCP put into the message, what did the IP protocol put into the message, what happened at, a, at the Ethernet level. And I'm not going to go into all the details of sequence numbers and datagram headers and the like because we're primarily focused on HTTP. And what I really want you to take away from this discussion is that we exchanged three messages before the HTTP traffic started to flow. So three messages. This is known as the TCP handshake, the three-step TCP handshake. It's the handshake protocol to make sure both the server and the client are in agreement about how to communicate. It's not until that handshake completes that we start sending HTTP messages. So this was the message that I sent out that was the GET request or host www.odecode.com. You can see that that GET message, that HTTP request message is layered into a TCP message, which also, IP adds its own headers here, and so does Ethernet, and that's what the layered communication stack, that's how it does its job. It encapsulates and surrounds data from a higher level inside of information that it uses to do, let's say, error detection at the TCP level or routing at the IP level. So that was the outgoing request message. Here was the incoming response message that says, essentially, this is a status code 301. The resource has moved permanently. My computer acknowledged that. And then the final line that is in red is a bit of a concern, and it sort of indicates that I didn't write my HTTP client correctly. What happened is my client expected the server to keep that socket open and stay connected, but 
something must have happened the server side and it closed the socket. I was expecting it to be open. At the TCP level, this generated a reset. And that actually leads nicely into the next discussion about HTTP connections and HTTP performance. As you can see, HTTP relies almost entirely on TCP to take care of all the hard work. And TCP does involve some overhead, like the handshakes that we can see here in Wireshark. And thus, the performance characteristics of HTTP, they're mostly also going to rely on the performance characteristics of TCP, and that's what we're going to talk about next. And we'll also talk about why that red line appears. Why did the server close the connection on me?